In a tough market where agents are screaming to get listings, one central London corporate agent has just lost £5 million worth of properties from me based on empty promises and poor customer service. Let me explain. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Monty. I'm a central London boutique developer. We develop some of the nicest houses in London. I'm going to be sharing some pictures as we go on so then you can decide. Um, I also used to have an estate agency in central London which I started in 1997 where we had a big management portfolio and that's how we value an estate agency business. The more management accounts that you have, the more fixed income that you have, the more your company's worth. It's a little bit like a mobile telephone provider. Imagine you're with O2 or Vodafone or whoever you're with and you're paying a monthly subscription and that's your repeat business and the value of your business. For the estate agencies, it's the same. The more properties that you manage, the more fixed income that you have. And that's how we built our business and eventually offloaded to a corporate. But subsequently, I've always bought, refurb and sold and mainly in central London and northwest London. So that just gives you a little bit of a background. So understanding the estate agency is really important. And it's, it's something that I know like the back of my hand. I've got the blueprint for it because I've done it all so long. We developed two houses and uh, one of them was in central London, prime central London. And the second one was in Shepherd's Bush, which aren't also called central London, but some of the viewers that have commented in the past wouldn't consider West 12 and Shepherd's Bush to be central London. Whenever we develop houses, we call agents, local agents or estate agencies that we'll have a relationship with to come and give us a valuation. And when these agents come, they automatically are wanting to try and get that property on their books so that they can advertise and earn a potential commission. Now, there's other spin-offs from getting a good listing as well, which I've mentioned in some of my other videos, but just one, for example, would be if you were to sell a house on a nice road and other neighbors or other streets were thinking of selling a property, you normally search because people are really up to date now with what's selling, what's on the market in their location, and they'll see who the agents are. If you sell a property, there's a good chance that another potential seller will come to you because you've hit a record price or you've sold something fast they'll normally go with you so that's the sort of background behind it gut feeling questions and answers I went with two agents we'll always go with two agents and the reason for that is I don't like to be tied up with one agent and also having two agents brings in a little bit of competition because agent A wants to sell it before agent B and whoever gets the deal gets the commission, which can be a lot of money. The agents come round, I appoint two agents. This particular agent was disappointed that they didn't get the instruction. Subsequently, I instructed one of their other offices on another property, which was the second property. And uh, the customer service that I was receiving from that agent was very, very good, high class. Um, no complaints, probably one of the top five agents in terms of customer service that I dealt with. Based on that customer service, it was time for me to change the original agent because we hadn't sold the property to a new agent and there's a reason why I do that which I'll explain in another video or you can put it into the comments below and you can ask me a question and I'll try and give you an answer so based on the good customer service I said I'm thinking of changing the agent your colleague has come round and I'm not too confident maybe you could have a word with him and let him know we've got this property with you which is valued at 2.75 million pounds and we've got another property which we're putting onto the market at 2.25 million pounds so 2.75 and 2.25 is 5 million pounds that's 5 million pounds worth of property coming onto your books coming onto your website which can lead to more business and a potential sales commission happy days right and you also get recognition from the corporates above based on you getting a good listing so there's lots of good that can come out of this for the manager now all the manager has to do is provide customer service anyway the agent comes around or the manager is introduced to me comes around meets me hi Monty sorry we didn't get it the first time basically just told him look I'm the only reason that you're getting it this time is because I'm getting a high level service from your other office and I expect nothing less he goes okay we've got two or three applicants that we could bring around straight away we've noticed your property on the market so this is where you need to increase your level 
of customer service. What I don't like to do is put my properties on with a reduced price because that's a negative scenario for me and for the property. It's something that I don't do. I'd rather just change the agent and start afresh with a new price because then it becomes a fresh listing. So that's a top tip for you guys. Based on the promise, I'll give you the instruction, but I don't want you to market the property you can have it as an off-market listing and once I'm ready, then we can advertise for the new listing. Terms are signed, contracts are signed and off they go. Week one, no viewings. Week two, no viewing. I've now chased the manager up, asked him, you sold me that you had two or three people. Where are these two or three people and have you got a viewing bought? Anyway, promised me uh, one of the viewings. The viewings have now, one viewing was now booked. Based on that viewing, I have an alarm code and uh, I would disarm the alarm. And then once the viewing is conducted, I would rearm the alarm. Now I know with our properties, based on them being luxury properties, finished off to a bespoke standard. A serious applicant will take possibly half an hour to view our properties and I'll tell you why. If we have a ground floor, a first floor and a new loft. The ground floor on this property has got an amazing double reception room. There's so many features within it so you're going to be spending circa three to five minutes in this space. You're then going to be walking through the hallway and in the hallway we've got some really nice towels, we've got a staircase with them, some carpets, we've got some fitted wardrobes for your coats and your shoes and then we have a WC that is wallpapered and it's got some nice beading around and it's got a nice Victorian touch to it. So that's going to take you another two to three minutes as well. And then you walk into an enormous open plan kitchen and dining room which has a, an outlook to a 80 foot garden. Now this space is super special. If you are a serious buyer and you like the property, you're gonna be spending at least five to seven minutes in this space because there's so much to see. There's a bespoke kitchen, there's a nice top, there's a larder, the wood floor is amazing, the views of the garden is really nice, there's a small utility space as well. You then go upstairs, first landing, one bedroom, vaulted ceiling, family bathroom, another two to three minutes. You're then going to be walking into the master bedroom which is a very very nice wow space and that's going to take you possibly if you're interested and you're not going to see many bedrooms like this feels really really nice. You're going to be spending at least five minutes here and then going up the rest of the house you're going to be in there for another 10 minutes so that's where I get my 30 minutes from. Based on past houses it's always been the same because we follow a template. Every house is different but we make them bespoke and there's lots of things to appreciate. Calls me back within 10 minutes viewing's gone great can you turn the alarm back on now I know it takes 30 to 40 minutes to see this house for a good viewing and he's now coming back to me in 10 minutes after being chased for two weeks to get the viewing and uh, it's not adding up that these guys were potentially interested or hot so instead of our, me asking how did the viewings go I simply sent a message to say usually a good viewing in any of our properties takes a minimum of 30 minutes and based on your application being in there for 10 minutes don't hold your breath that's just my experience coming through I've now chased him up for another viewing the week after and that was on a Monday or Tuesday didn't get a response back so I'm giving you 2.25 million pounds worth of property an amazing house and you're not responding to me that's a big problem and you represent a corporate agent that expects you to deliver a high quality of service. So no response on the Monday, I followed up, hey, haven't got a response, please can you have the professional courtesy to let me know? And I got a response back saying that there is a viewing booked for Friday. So I've sent the message on the Monday, I've now got a reply to say that there will be a viewing on Friday. What do you do? Do you wait? until Friday or do you try and get them in early? So my response to him was it's Monday today, Friday's four days away, let's hope they don't cancel. Friday messaged him, hi is the viewing taking place today, please let me know, I'm going to need to turn the alarm off. Uh, no viewing and no response. On the Monday I got no response. I sent a WhatsApp and an email and I got no response. So what do I do? Well, I could, I could go back to Agent A who's giving me an excellent service and say, hey, your man's not performing. Or I could go to 
head office and complain that I'm not getting a response or I could leave it and just accept it. So what do we do? Having been an agent for over 20 years, I would not expect this. It's all about branding, it's all about customer service and it's all about delivery. So that's important. Now, if somebody's not delivering, the best thing to do, bring it to somebody's attention because otherwise it's just going to be damaging your brand and your company and it's not gonna be good for you and your company going forward. I reached out to head office. I was then put through to the branch director. He replied to my email and then gave me a call back I explained to him exactly what had happened, confirmed my complaint. He's been told another story because this was all on email. And then he decided to call me. Once he called me, he wanted to get my side of the story. And when I told him my side of the story, in terms of a 2.75 million pound instruction is here, 2.25 million pound is here, five million pounds. We developed some of the nicest houses. You can see the pictures on your website. I used to have my own agency. I know how things work. I know that all of your team members represent the company and you give them a high level of training and this is your frontline staff and they've got to represent what you stand for. And absolutely, absolutely, I totally agree, I totally agree. Let me um, get to the bottom of this and I'll come back to you and hopefully we can retain your business. Now what was really important here is the agent or the sales manager could have been a little bit disheartened because we had not allowed them to advertise. But there was a reason for that. If you deliver good customer service and you don't get a result with your two or three potential applicants, once we were ready to advertise, we would potentially give you the listing. Came back to me, apologized and uh, said that I wouldn't have to deal with him again. It was my choice. We're now in a situation where we've got about a week to go before we relist, which we already have. We've reduced the price as a new listing. It's gone on with another agent. The, the decision that I made was we will no longer have an agency agreement with you. Based on the poor customer service, your sales manager has let you down has let the team down, has let the company down. We're taking our property back and we're giving it to one of your competitors who are now going to be listing that property, which was something that your manager knew that he would have had the opportunity to do. Now these agents, they're always fighting for instructions, but once they get the instruction, they get complacent and they start losing clients, whether they're landlords or whether they're owners. And it's something that I would recommend to agents just focus on customer service and whether you're, you're an owner now or I would be owner in the future and everybody should be striving to own property in the future and potentially you'll be selling property in the future and having to deal with estate agents. It's important to have high expectations when it comes to customer service. It is the biggest transaction. You're not going to sell anything more than, than the value of a house. The key is customer service and do not expect anything less than you deserve. Until next time, take care. Bye.